What Would You Do is next. Followed by Canterbury's new music programme, Top 10 Hits. Then we give you some new fashion tips on Corbin's fashion and beauty programme. Master Valet Dry Cleaning Time. Service in Christchurch for four generations. He's back. As from this morning, you're officially relieved of your duties. Sacked. Suspended. You forget I'm on leave. Leave? Yes, a special leave. You made that quite clear this morning. Nonsense, Callum. Really? You're not going anywhere, Callum. <laughs> you want to bet the rent on that? You want a passport by Saturday, it's going to cost you a century. And that's cheap, believe me. See, I haven't got many friends. <laughs> He's in trouble. Callan, Sunday at 8.30 on CTV. Well, hi and welcome once again as we pose the question to our panel from the Christchurch Drama Centre. The question, uh, well, it could be any question. Uh, the question really is, what would you do in certain circumstances? Our audience once again tonight is from uh, Rangi and St Andrews College. Hi panel, welcome aboard. Let's get your, your name, your, uh, your, not your address, but how about your name, your age in school or whatever it is that you do. Okay, I'm Geoffrey Baggis. I'm 14 and I come from Christchurch Boys High School. I'm Mr Hutchins and I come from Rangi Ruru Girls School. Uh, my name's Richard Walker and I'm um, between jobs. My name's Julie Robertson and I'm from Hagley High School. Okay, let's go. The question is, for a start, you, there are ten pistols in front of you, only one of which is loaded. You must pick one up, point it at your forehead and pull the trigger. If you can walk away, you do so as a millionaire. What would you do? Julie. <laughs> I don't think I'd do it, knowing my luck, I'd get the loaded one. <laughs> It's, yeah. yeah, it's like suicide, really. It's sort of, um... One chance in ten of getting the loaded one. I wouldn't want to take the risk. Not worth the risk? No. <laughs> I wouldn't want to kill myself just by picking up the wrong gun. Okay, Richard, what would you do? Um, it's a dicey one. Uh, <laughs> think about it for a while. Richard's tempted. Weigh up the odds. A million dollars. Sounds good. <laughs> pick up a gun and walk away, hopefully. So you'd do it. You'd pick up the gun, point it at your forehead for a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Pointing it at someone else is not an option. Is, thank is, you. Is, okay, is, Esther, what would you do? Um, I think I'd just have to walk away. I wouldn't want the risk of having to kill myself because, I mean, that could be it and I wouldn't be getting a million dollars either, would I? So. Just think of it. You could have a million dollars which would set you up for the rest of your life. But if um, you're dead, you're not going to know anyway. <laughs> um, no, I think I'd walk away. You'd walk away from mm. it. Jeffrey, what would you do? Uh, um, yeah, I'd do it. I mean, a million dollars and the chance is one out of ten. I mean, how unlucky could I be? So, yeah. How unlucky could you be? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty permanent sort of a whack at it, isn't it? Okay, audience, where are we with this one? Do you do it. Yeah. Hang on a sec, start again. Or if you pick up the gun and, um, and you're dead, then, well, you're not going to know, are you? <laughs> so you'd agree with what I said? Yeah, that's definitely. I mean, if you, um, if you die, then well, it's all over. You're not, you're not going to regret it because you, well, I don't know what so what, you, so what, you're death, saying, but what you're saying is you'd rather be dead than, than not have a million dollars, given the chance? Well, uh, what I'd say is, yes, I'd do it. <laughs> Anybody else? You've got to take your chances as they come. Uh -huh. um, you, you don't get anything without a risk. Aha. Uh -huh. So you think that do the it. risk of do one it. in ten is worth doing? Yeah. yeah. You'd hate yourself if you didn't. And then you well, well, you wouldn't be around to hate yourself. You've got the million dollars. <laughs> You'd hate yourself if you didn't do it and then someone else did it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's a point. Anyway, what are the chances that you actually get the wrong one? One out of ten. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's a bit unrealistic. It's a bit small, yeah. yeah. Well, the chance is quite small, so... The chance is quite small? Does that mean you'd do it? Yeah, because you've got nine chances of ten of walking away with a million. Okay. <laughs> you wouldn't do it on 50-50? How about if it was two chances out of ten? Two of the guns are loaded. Yeah, still do it. Yeah, still, still do it. Pretty good odds, yeah. 
It's better than lotto. <laughs> Anybody else who said they would do it before, would you continue? Would you have a whack at it? Was two out of ten? Yeah. 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 You would. How about three? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. When do the odds become too much? When does the risk become too great? At 50 50? You'd still go at it at until you got to 50 50. I'd yep. think about it at four. You'd start <laughs> thinking about it at four. It'd be interesting to see how many of you would actually really embark on it if you were doing it with a loaded gun. What do you reckon, panel? Do you think they'd do it? Nah. <laughs> All talk, huh? All right, let's move on. If God appeared to you in a series of very vivid dreams and told you to leave everything behind and travel alone to the Red Sea and become a fisherman, what would you do? <laughs> I seriously wonder. <laughs> That's a good question, isn't it? What would you do? All right, Esther, you can start with this one. I wouldn't believe him. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't follow. I wouldn't do it. I, just, I don't believe if he'd appear to me in a dream, basically like that. But they were very vivid, very clear dreams. It was definitely. Oh, well, all my God dreams are really vivid and clear, so. Oh, well, lucky. If I you. followed all of them. <laughs> okay, so you wouldn't go. I don't think so. You wouldn't head At off. Unless I to decided to go for a holiday or something first. Decide. No, that's not a choice. You have to set off on foot. <laughs> For the Red Sea. No. On foot, yeah. No, because you see, you, you know, if you believe in God and, and God has given you the instructions, he will find a way. And when you get to where you have to cross oceans and things, the, the oceans just part and you keep walking. <laughs> okay, sorry, Richard, have a go. Um, if you believe in God, then uh, someone coming to you in your dreams is the ultimate. And so most likely you'd do it. So you'd head so away. Yeah, if, if I truly believed in God and God came to me in my dreams, then that would be the ultimate. What would you do, Jeffrey? Well, I wouldn't go to the Red Sea and become a fisherman. Um, no. You'd be, you'd be willing to take on the wrath of God? Well, I'd think about it first, I mean, and weigh up all the options. I mean, what am I leaving here? And why would I want to be a fisherman on the Red Sea? And sort of Because God jolly well told you to. <laughs> No, you know, don't question me, just do it. Well, I think I've questioned the wrath of God a few times before, and I think it's sort of uh, turned out okay for me, so... What's happened to our society today? Does nobody believe in God anymore? Ah, uh, Julie. I don't believe in God as such. I do believe there is a God, but I, would, I wouldn't do it. I mean, and the kind of God that I believe in wouldn't punish you for not doing it anyway because that's just fear, that's doing what, what you're told because if you don't you'll get punished and I don't think that fear needs to play a part in it. Okay, let's say it's not fear, the, 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 the motivation is purely and simply divine and if God asks you to do something he's asking you for a reason or she. Well, you're willing to, to weigh it all up. You're not just going to blindly follow the instructions. No. <laughs> I'd want to know the divine purpose for it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not just going to go and drop everything and do that. But isn't that part of what the biblical teachings are all about? But I'm just, not into the biblical teachings. <laughs> that you, you just believe in God and God's word is... What do you reckon, audience? Mm. Don't do any weird You'd what? Ask for ID. <laughs> <laughs> Ask for an ID first. Hi, I'm God. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Uh, I think if God does appear to you in a dream, then um, in all probability you're a Christian in that case. So um, you probably do it. Because um, if he appears to you in a dream, then um, you're probably going to believe in him. Uh -huh. So, so uh, yes. would you yeah. head away, would you? Yeah. Well, not personally. But you wouldn't personally? <laughs> no. Okay. Is there anybody here who would, if they had a vivid, really vivid dream about God and believed it, is there anyone here who would actually pack their bags and set off for the Red Sea to become a fisherman? <laughs> Nobody at all? No. Ah, you would? Yeah. You'd head away? God moves in mysterious ways. He's got a reason for everything. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a reason for everything, so it might be some... You might go over there and see another star or... Get a stable or something, and there's a purpose for it. <laughs> God moves in mysterious ways, yes. yes. What if he asked you to sacrifice a loved one? Um, he's done that before. Um, there's Abraham, we took him up on the hill, and God doesn't really want to hurt anyone. He's a loving God. He's in for love, not war or killing anything. That's why. So, so you'd, yeah. you'd go... Yeah to the extent of having the knife ready to do the job. Yeah. 
<laughs> I don't know about you folks, but I'll be a bit reticent about that one there. Anyway, we have to take a break and we'll be back with some other questions in just a couple of moments. Pens come home in a new series of Just Good Friends, but some say? things never change. You were supposed to meet me here last year. You are exactly 12 months late. Yeah, well, I'm sorry about that. Sorry? That's it, is it? Just sorry? Vince is as reliable as ever. The moment you mention Notre Dame, everyone, like everyone, tells him, of course, you do a joke. I know what you mean, Ben. Enough to give anyone help. It's a whole new set of circumstances in Just Good Friends, Saturday at 7 on CTV. There's one thing about public transport you should keep in mind. Double six, double eight, double five. It's the number to dial for bus route, timetable and fare information. Bus Info, the information service that keeps you running on time. Potaloo, Potaloo, where do you want your Potaloo? Go on, don't be shy and say, we can get you one next day. Your very own genuine Potaloo. Now they're great at work sites and gatherings. We deliver and keep them fit for kings. So go on, it's easy to get through. Just tell us where you want your portaloo, portaloo. I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but by God, it's nice to browse and to buy at Simla House Antiques, 454 Columbus Street, Sydenham. Phone number 665-322. And I am positive we can do a good deal for you. Sensational savings at Dowson's crazy price sale. Ladies fitness trainers down to $19.95. Men's trainers also down to $19.95. Aerosport and Kosogi trainers only $39.95. Now at Dowson's crazy price sale. And we continue asking questions of our panel and asking them what they'd do, and I guess you'll be mulling over in your mind what you'd do if you were confronted by some of these situations. But here's your next question, panel. By murdering one innocent pe person, you will end all hunger in the world. Would you do it? Esther. Um, well, I don't know if I actually could. I think it's a good idea, sort of, in a way. <laughs> I mean, I, mean, I, think, I, don't have to do I it. think in theory I could do it, but when I was actually trying to do it, I don't know if I could. It depends who the person is. If, um, if they'd done something wrong or they weren't a very nice person, perhaps it would be a bit easier. But, um, if no, they were nice. let, let me simplify it a little for you. It's nobody you know, it's a total stranger, um, uh, but you just simply have to murder someone. Uh, and, and by doing that, that's it, you will end all hunger in the world. Indeed, um, we could go so far as saying you could choose the person that you're going to knock off. Um, <laughs> no. But even me. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know. I really don't you know that one. bright ideas one. down here. <laughs> no, no punishment no. for it at all. Very dangerous of a shot. No, I don't know. It's you don't know whether you'd do it or not? No. Hmm. It's an interesting hypothetical question, isn't it? Do you have the consent of the other person? No. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I, 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 I volunteer to be murdered. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, they could say, like, I want, I want to be murdered and, you know, to save that, that raises world a, hunger. That raises a totally different... Well, I suppose if you can find someone who wants to be murdered, that's fine so with me. Yeah. What, what, what? Someone might be willing to take that second. Someone might be willing to yeah, make that sacrifice. they'd say, why not? OK, but the question is not, would you make that sacrifice, although maybe we can come back and talk about that afterwards. For now, the question is, would you do it? Hmm. Um, or what would you do? You could find someone... Um, who's in a bad situation who wants to die anyway, who's going to keep this thing <laughs> seriously considering it. But that's not the question. The question is, what would you do? Richard, what would you do? Contemplate for a while. Um, find an extremely uh, painless way of doing it and maybe, 
Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe you'd be willing to do it. Maybe. End hunger in the world. Julie, what would you do? I wouldn't do it. I couldn't murder someone else, especially if it was just some completely innocent person. I mean, I wouldn't like the thought of someone murdering me for something like that. I mean, the, the people who are suffering from hunger in the world, there must be some reason for that. And I think... Well, then, you know, then God works in mysterious ways. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there must, there must be some other way to get them out of it that, than murdering a completely innocent person. Jeffrey, hang on a sec. Oh, I couldn't do it. You um, couldn't do it? No, I couldn't murder an innocent person to sort of... Under any circumstances? Not under any circumstances. Okay, now let, 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 let's toss it around with the audience because quite a few of you have perked up with some really good ideas during the course of the last couple of moments of discussion and uh, one of you suggested that if you found the right person... Yeah. yeah. Someone, yeah. Might yeah. Someone might volunteer? I think it's a good idea that... They wanna okay, if you're going to commit suicide, instead of jumping off a bridge, did someone say, give me a ring? <laughs> <laughs> How would you do it? Shoot them. Shoot, shoot them. them. Oh, poison. Shoot them in the yeah, temple. Really fast, really yeah. quick. Really fast, Painless, really quick. Yeah. Injection? An injection? <laughs> uh, you have Okay. <laughs> but you, you, you don't have a choice about how you're going to do it. You've got to, you've got to shoot them, okay? And one person's not much to go around. How are you going to feel the other? <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> Say that again. What was it? One person's not much to go around. There's quite a few hungry people out there. I suppose it depends how thinly you slice them, doesn't mm, it? Yeah. <laughs> you just kill one person. Just... You know, if you just kill one, there's more people going to die from hunger than if you both no, you're just killing one. No, what you've, what you've, the, the, the question is, if by murdering one person you eliminate hunger in the whole world, now that presumes that some power is going to just change things, but you have the power to make that choice. It's worth it because it's one life to 40,000 yeah, people dying each yeah. day. Yeah, and it's just one person. If all those people didn't die, then there'd be an overpopulation problem by about <laughs> 2030. All these people reproduce, and there's going to be a lot more people, um, and it's going to cause more problems than it would solve. Right. By killing, pe by curing hunger. Right. So you wouldn't do it. No. For that reason. Yeah. Not because you wouldn't want to kill someone. Yeah. The suffering. That's so much. That suffer so much. It's better to die with one one person die with a bullet than. Millions of people die slowly yeah. of hunger. Yeah. But whether it's one person or whether it's, it's millions of people, each life is, is just as precious, it's just the same. What right have you to go and uh, kill one person or 40, 40, 40 million people? They're both equally the same. They've got just as much right to be on the planet as these other people do. So we're talking about a question of principle, aren't we? Yeah. I mean, the principle is, yeah, all, 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 all you do good is that want to knock one person off to save a whole bunch of others. Wow. You're playing God here, aren't you? Well, chances are that, A, you're going to find someone who will want to die and um, who, who won't mind being killed, and B, you're going to also find a person who won't mind killing them and will want to kill them. <laughs> I mean, just uh, pop into a prison and find a, a mass murderer or something, and uh, well, they probably wouldn't have any qualms. probably be quite about. happy to do the job for you. The question is, would you do it, though? And then, and then, and then you, you, you mustn't overlook what happens if you do do that. You eliminate hunger in the world. That means all of these people who are hungry at the moment, as you said, are then going to go and reproduce, and the problem will start again, what, within a couple of years. How do you feel about that? Yeah, but the need to the many outweigh the need to the few. I'm sorry? The need to the many outweigh the need to the few. If one person's going to die, that's the price you have to pay. That's the price you have to pay. Okay, okay, but then what happens when suddenly hunger ends and you double the world population? The person who you see. <laughs> we move to another planet. Yes, all right, we'll do that. We're on our way. Okay, all right, let's move on to another question for the panel. You can choose to live for 200 years at whatever age you choose to be. Okay, so you can choose whatever age you want to be and you will live for 200 years at that age. But you'll become extremely ugly. <laughs> what would you do? Who would like to start? Richard. Um, <clears throat> when do you get the choice? Now. Now, right now. So, see, we don't, we don't know what age is, what it's like to be 30 or anything. Okay, well you can so, choose whatever age that you okay. want. Okay, I'll say, I'll say 28. So you choose the age of 28? Yep. Okay, but you're going to live at that age for the next 200 years? 
yep. except you're going to be real ugly. Never mind. You'll, you'll cope with that? Definitely. Yep. You'd just like to live 200 years at the age of 28? Being really ugly, yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jeffrey, what do you think about that? Um, I'd probably go with 38. Um, yeah, I'd like to do it. Yeah. You'd do it as well? Yeah. I mean, living for 200 years, seeing what the world's going to be like then. Worth being ugly for the rest of the 200 years? I think so. How about 98, you're already ugly. <laughs> How about 98, you're already Be quiet, you behave yourself. OK, we're going to take a break and we'll be back in a couple of moments for the other two panellists to answer that same question. What were the forces? helping to shape Europe in the Middle Ages from the outside. And among them, what was the part played by Islam? Even today, the battle between Christianity and Islam is bitter. In medieval times, it was horrific. The Crusades had a very seamy side, and it's not really surprising that in Arab countries, they're often seen as the first wave of Western colonialism. Triumph of the West looks at history's two most powerful religions, Sunday. <laughs> It's now on Dowson's crazy price sale. Lady sandals from only $10 and lady shoes from only $19.95. That's up to 50% off at Dowson's crazy price sale. A great love begins for Ryan O'Neill and Ally McGraw. You put down anything in pants, but verbal volleyball is not my idea of a relationship. Love grows from strange beginnings. How can you see me and still love me? That's what it's about, Preppy. If you marry her now, I'll not give you the time of day. And love triumphs. For a while, Love Story, Saturday at 8 on CTV. OK, the question that we've asked is, you could live at whatever age you choose, for the next 200 years, the only payoff is that you will be very, very ugly. Let's get a female perspective on it. We'll start with Esther. Um, I think I'd do it too. It wouldn't really worry me. I think that um, 200 years, it'd be amazing to see what actually happened. And um, I'd sort of like to be around the age of 27, 28 too. And you'd do it? Yep. Quite comfortable about being yeah, ugly for the rest so. of those 200 years? It's a bit of a calm, but um, yeah, I think I would. Yeah, with ugly warts and moles <coughs> all over your face and pimples and hair and... Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. I'd do it too. You'd I'd do wanna, it too? Yeah, I'd want to be about 30. I mean, it's the, it's the inner person that's the nice one, not what the person looks like, so why would it... I mean, I know it would take a few people to adjust to you being so ugly, but, I mean, once they did, what difference would it make? Isn't that interesting? So you'd all choose to be here for the next 200 years? Yeah. To see what happens to the world. How about the audience? Yeah. Isn't it interesting that they all chose to be between, uh, between 20 and 30, except Richard, who wants to be 38? Why did you choose those ages, panel? Because I think that it's, like, at 30-ish, you've, you've still got a young mind and you still want to go out and try things out and travel around. But as you get older, you, well, a lot of people tend to close in and just settle down. But I'd rather be still moving around. Uh -huh. Mm, you all feel about mm. wanting to be a mature age as you go into your 200 years of ugliness. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's talk to the audience. What, what would you do? Do it when you're young. Uh -huh. Do it when you're about four. Do it when you're about... <laughs> I would love to be little again instead of... Because it wouldn't matter if you're ugly because you're so small and everybody would sort of just go, you know, look at that ugly kid. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't really baby matter. Baby's ugly anyway. So yeah. they'll go, goo, 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 what an ugly kid. Yeah, but I'd like to be a baby with, you know, moles in here. <laughs> but then you wouldn't understand a lot of the stuff that happened and stuff. You, you couldn't... Like, you imagine being four years old for 200 years. <laughs> and then you'd die. You'd just be able to wrap your pants around your fingers sort of you'd but learn all the tricks and everything. No. That'd be long gone, oh, wouldn't it? They don't survive it. You're the only one that lives for 200 years, right? But they should have technology by then to stop you being ugly. But you wouldn't understand how to do that. Yeah. You could Plastic chop surgery, off your wear a face mask. and have another one. You'd what? Chop off your face and glue on another one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that day's coming, isn't it? Yeah. They're doing that sort of thing. Sorry, you were saying at the front? Well, 200 years of being four and being humiliated for being ugly. I mean, when you're a kid and you've uh, got something wrong with you and you're being humiliated, you want to grow out of that as soon as possible. Yeah, 200 years would be a hell of a long time. <laughs> Any comments over this side? 
Mm. <coughs> you wouldn't want to? Speak up so we can all hear you. <laughs> Loudly. You, you would or you wouldn't? I wouldn't. You wouldn't? No. Why? Because all your parents would die and your grandparents and all your friends and... Yeah, you'd outlive everybody, wouldn't you? Because you, like, you'd make a friend and then say in 50 years time they've gone and died mm. and you're still living and you've lost so many friends through it. Hey, let's have a show of hands. You'd be so young. 200 years of misery. Yeah, you, they'll grow up and you'll be left there. Wouldn't you exactly, so let's have a show of hands. Age? Sorry? Wouldn't you get sick of being the same age for so long? Well, I don't know, would you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I've been this age for years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd do it when I was older because then, like, even 70 or something, because then you wouldn't, you'd have a better understanding of the world and you wouldn't worry so much about your appearance either at that age. That's yeah, a good yeah. point. Let's have a show of hands though. How many, how many in the audience, given the choice, would do it? Would choose to stay at a particular age for 200 years? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Okay, hands down. What about those who wouldn't under any circumstances? That's a fairly even spread, isn't it? It's interesting. Have they raised anything that you hadn't thought of, panellists? The relationship part. Yeah, yeah. You, you're going to outlive really everybody. They're just going to fall by the wayside, aren't they? But you still get to meet new people. Yeah. <laughs> but you All won't because you're ugly. Well, <laughs> there might, there's other ugly people out there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> OK, let's move on to another question. You have the chance to meet someone with whom you can have the most satisfying love imaginable the stuff that dreams are really made of unfortunately though you know that that person's going to die within six months knowing the pain that will follow would you still want to meet this person and fall in love Esther um, yes I think I would I think it's worth having experience even if it's only for six months I think we I mean people do get over things and I think it's worth having something rather than not bothering at all so I would. Okay. Richard? Definitely. Yeah, I agree with Esther. Um, it's better to have loved and lost than not to love at all. It's better to have loved and lost than <laughs> never have loved at all. Julie? Yeah, I'd do it. I mean, it'd be nice for that person as well for their last six months of their life. And I think it'd be worthwhile. Okay, what about you, Geoffrey? Yeah, I'd do it. I agree with Julie that um, it would give that person some satisfaction in their life as well. Uh -huh. the end. Okay, what if. What if the person wasn't going to die, but after six months was going to betray you in the most horrible way? What would you do then, Esther? Um, no, I wouldn't then. <laughs> you wouldn't? I think I would, no. You'd be willing to go for it as long as they're going to die, but if they're going to betray you, the answer's no. Well, I don't think it'd be, it'd be, it wouldn't be a satisfactory relationship or something then if they were going to do that. Um, and I think if it was really bad, the bad would outweigh the good in the end. So, and then I'd have other years to live on with that. So, I don't think I don't know. I don't think I would. Okay, Richard. Revenge. Would be great. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd be best revenge. You'd do it, and then you'd you'd, oh, you'd, yeah. you'd seek revenge. Yep. What sort of uh, revenge? Um, something to completely wreck her off as much as she wrecked me off. <laughs> <laughs> Julie. Um, I'd have to think twice about that. Um. I probably still would. I mean, that I mean, it happens all the time anyway. The stuff of dreams <laughs> worth having for six months. Yeah, why not? I mean, if that person wants to be horrible and betray you, that's their problem, not mine. What about well, Richard? Would uh, would you would you would you seek vengeance? No. The way Richard would. Come? If they want to do that, that's they've got to live with it, not me. Yeah. Richard, what would you? Uh, Jeffrey, what would you do? Um, no, I don't think I would. Then, I mean. I think it would be very disappointing at, all the, at the end of it just to sort of come out with that. Um, no, not at all. So if you're going to be betrayed, no way. Audience? No. Not if you're going to be betrayed. Yes. 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 You want to have the stuff of dreams for as long as you can get it. And after it's over, you can always write a book about it. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again. After it's over? You can always write a book about it. And you can become rich and famous. Yes. Yeah. Any other comments on this side? How could you love somebody that you knew was going to betray you? Yeah. Yeah. How could you love somebody that you knew was going to betray you? It's a good question. Yeah. I but we did down at the end of it. Yeah. After, I guess after we live in hope, don't we? Yeah. Sorry? But 
<laughs> you fell in love and you couldn't help it? Yeah, so it doesn't matter if they're is, is that how love works? I don't know. <laughs> so, is, love, is love something that you can't help, that you can't control? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah you, can't, you can't help who you fall in love with. It's, you can't help who you You can't fall. control it. Yeah. It's impossible. And I guess that's one of the many worries that we face in today's society. Audience, thanks for being with us today and thanks for helping out. Panelists, thanks for being with us. And we're back at the same time next week, 6 o'clock Tuesday, in fact we start. And I hope you'll find time to join us when we once again pose the question, what would you do in certain circumstances?